I'm Brad Rodriguez from Fix This, Build That, and today we're building a nightstand with a secret drawer. I've been fascinated with secret drawers for a long time. One of my favorite YouTube channels is Chris Ramsey, where he solves puzzle boxes. I just love all the little mechanisms and moves there. So this is the first of what I hope to be a whole new series on putting hidden compartments, concealment drawers, and other puzzle features into my projects. Now the nightstand is a pretty basic piece, so I'm gonna blitz through a lot of the build process. I'll focus on some tips and tricks, but mainly the secret compartment. And you'll see some of the fails and struggles along the way as I figured out my first secret drawer with a hidden release mechanism. I used walnut plywood with mitered corners and a dadoed center divider for the cabinet. It's very similar to the computer desk that I recently made, so you can get all the details on assembly over there if you wanna check that out. But here's a little montage of what I did to get to the glue up where I had my first setback. I got all those pieces together and I put the splines and everything to a test fit. You always want to do a test fit when you're doing something like miters that have a lot of moving parts before you do the actual glue up. Doing this pre-assembly is the way to go. And as they say, the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. The glue up didn't quite go as smoothly as the test fit. No! Ugh. Not a good time to come apart. Yes, that was the corner clamp exploding into four pieces. Now applying the glue also on, took baby. longer than expected, and so it was setting up out of square. On, baby. Don't do this to me. And I couldn't make it move back. Good thing I did that test fit. Oh, I'm gonna cry on camera. What is going on? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Mistakes were made. All right, it's the next day and I took this out of the clamps and it actually was not as bad as I thought it was. I was kind of having a little bit of a meltdown. Don't do this to me. To my credit, it was after midnight and uh, you know, that's what happens. There are some gaps down here. Luckily, it's this bottom right here. The top does have a little bit of gaps, but I think we can close those up and be okay. All in all, I think we'll be all right. I used the screwdriver trick to close up the gaps as best I could, and I filled them with sawdust and wood glue until they looked passable. Now for the drawer fronts, I used solid walnut. I didn't have boards wide enough for the fronts, so I did a couple small glue ups to get the pieces. And while the panels were drying, I also milled up some walnut trim to cover the plywood edges. I used my milling machines from Jet, the sponsor of today's video, and I can't stress enough how awesome it is to have the right tools to take rough lumber and turn it into any size or thickness that I want. Now you can check the links below in the description for all the Jet tools that I used, and a big thanks to Jet for supporting my channel. Now I love the epoxy inlay on the computer desk that I built, and I wanted to use that same design, except scale it up a bit for this build. Now last time, I didn't need the design to be too precise, but to make the hidden release button, I had to make it perfect so that it would work and look seamless. I used SketchUp, a 3D drawing software, to draw out a grid of intersecting lines. And then I overlaid the wallpaper design and I deleted the lines that I didn't need until I had the design that I wanted. Now from there, I brought it into Easel, the software my Inventables X-Carve CNC uses. I set all the cut lines to an eighth of an inch deep for the lower drawer front. But for the upper drawer, I chose one special diamond piece, a rhombus, if you're fancy, and I set it to cut all the way through the board, just leaving two little tabs to hold it in place. I fired up the X-Carve and I cut the bottom drawer front while I went back and cut the edge banding to size. The bottom drawer front came out awesome, so I set up the cut for that upper drawer front and let it go while I glued on the trim. The top drawer worked perfect too, and you can see the cutout going all the way through here. 
Now, before I started on the project, I did make some small test pieces on the CNC. Now, I had no idea if a movable wooden piece would work or not with the epoxy inlay, or if I could keep it spaced correctly so that you couldn't tell that it was there. So I tested several ways of wrapping and spacing the pieces. I poured in the test epoxy and I let it dry overnight to see what worked best. Ooh! Now some of the inserts came right out. That actually moved. Nice! And one did not budge at all. Wow, that is not budging at all. But I figured out the best approach was to wrap the piece in tape and put eighth of an inch wooden spacers in with no tape on them. And now I was ready for the main event with that real drawer front. These came out really nicely off the CNC. I did just a little bit of cleanup. Uh, now what I'm gonna do is prep these for the pour. I'm gonna pour them both at the same time. I'm going to take this out. I'm gonna use the method from the testing earlier. I'm gonna wrap it in Tyvek and then put the spacers in there to be buried into the epoxy. And hopefully it should all go well. I'll get these prepped and then we'll get started pouring. I started prepping with a little rhombus wrapping. It's got four sides, all of equal length. No, actually, I, I just put tape around the rhombus. <laughs> well, one thing I did here I didn't before was to put some paste wax on the outside of the piece to help it release easier. Now, for the pour, I used Total Boat High Performance Epoxy with a slow hardener and some light blue pigment. And while the epoxy was curing, I switched over to the base for the nightstand. I wanted a clean but sturdy look, so I went with 14 gauge steel square tube. Now it's a simple design with short legs attached to an apron on top. And after a few quick cuts and some grinding, I was ready to weld. I've got a Lincoln PowerMig 210MP, which makes adjusting for thinner material easy with the push of a few buttons. I typically use thicker 11 gauge material because it's more forgiving to weld with. But I went ahead with a thinner 14 gauge material just to reduce the weight a bit. I'm still working on my welding, but I feel like I'm getting better every time. I even added some feet caps to the square tube from some scrap plate that I had instead of using plastic feet. I ground down all my welds, which still took some doing, and then I sprayed on a couple coats of primer and metallic gold finish. And I love how the gold came out, and I painted the drawer pulls the same color too. It's a pretty cool look. The base is all welded up and painted. I have been avoiding working on these because uh, honestly, I am a little scared about how this whole thing's gonna come together and the button and everything, but it's time to jump in. I'm gonna go ahead and plane these down and then start working on the mechanism. Fingers crossed. I took off the tape and I ran them through my planer and everything was looking great. I was a little worried that I was gonna jar the piece loose, so I did finish off sanding by hand. Now to make the hidden button look seamless, I needed to make sure that it sat flush to the front surface. I decided to use the X-carve again before I removed the piece and to route out an eighth of an inch deep recess across the back of the shape, extending to either side. And the idea was I could attach a small metal plate and push that from behind to make it flush on the front. And after doing this part, I couldn't wait any longer. All right, I've waited about as long as I can. Let's see how this comes out. We've got the pocket in the back. We are ready to go. I'm gonna pop out the piece. I'm gonna use a little offcut from the test scrap to do it. Oh, it's not moving. Oh, oh there it goes. Oh yeah. Oh man, it worked, it came out and it is nice and smooth. This went actually really well. I'm gonna clean it up, uh, take the tape off. I'm pretty happy and if this works well, I can move on to the drawers. I cleaned it up and it did work well though. Somehow I missed filming me sliding it back in there again, but it works. And then I jumped into making the drawers.
I cut all the parts for the drawers, and we're gonna have actually three drawers in this. We're gonna have a bottom drawer that is just a normal drawer. We're going to have a top drawer that is gonna be this weird conglomeration of a thing that looks like a normal drawer, but when you push the secret button, the secret drawer comes out. So uh, I have not cut the secret drawer yet to size because uh, I'm not sure about it yet. So we're gonna go ahead and assemble the bottom drawer, which will be super fast and easy, and then I'll show you what's going on on this bottom one that's gonna make way for the secret. My pocket holes make drawers go together like a snap, and I'm using a floating bottom panel in all these drawers, which I kind of liked. I might go back to making them this way, actually. And here's how the top drawer goes together. It's laid upside down here, and you can start to get a feel for the depth of the main compartment versus the hidden one. Now, the lower parts will be the front and right side of the drawer. I cut the drawer fronts down to size to fit my design, which I'll tell you later why that was a bad idea but I also cut a plywood front and attached it to the drawer first. I'm gonna be using a mock-up. This is just a temporary drawer front because I'm actually mounting the drawer slides to the back. And if it all messes up, I don't wanna be drilling a bunch of holes in the walnut front with the epoxy because I don't wanna uh, mess anything up that way. So I'm gonna put these in here and then build the drawer, get everything working, then we'll transfer the real drawer front onto it. I installed the slides for the secret compartment onto the back of the drawer and on that temporary front. And after doing that, I knew exactly how big the drawer needed to be, or so I thought. I cut the parts to size and I assembled the small drawer and did a quick fit. I got the little hidden drawer in. The best way that I think to install this is gonna be upside down because I really don't have anything to reference off of the bottom. Uh, so if I put it in here on top of some scraps, this looks like it would work. I'm gonna attach it, then we're gonna throw it in there and see how it goes. But it's looking good. After I attach the drawer, I added in a spring to the back. The spring is going to shoot the drawer out once that button is pushed for an extra cool factor. I just used a small piece of dowel drilled into the main drawer, and this holds onto a spring that fits perfectly over the dowel and leaves enough room to compress and push that drawer out. All right, we are now at the point where I Honestly, uh, not sure what's gonna happen here. Uh, the spring is working great. I might add another one just to give it a little more oomph, but um, I only have this little space in here to make this button work. I'm gonna work my way through this and bring you along for the ride, see how this thing works, uh, or if I can make it work, because I'm starting to doubt myself a bit. But let's hang in there. I think we got this. I grabbed a scrap of eighth inch plate steel and I cut out a little piece to fit in the pocket on the back of that drawer front that we had just CNC'd. Then I drilled two holes in the back of the plate and attached it to the button. And while trying to figure out how to push that piece back in flush, Maleki came in for the save. Hello, friend. I was texting with John and he suggested using magnets to pull it tight versus the spring idea that I was wrestling with in my head that was way more complicated. I put a couple small magnets into the walnut and it worked like a charm. But I realized I needed a little more space in that pocket on the back. So I cut down the plate to make it a little shorter. I went ahead and mounted the slides in the lower drawer, which were very straightforward since it didn't matter where they went in that opening. But before I attached the drawer front, I realized I still needed to put finish on them. So I took a quick break and I finish sanded the fronts and put on some Rubio Pure. Now the blue epoxy really contrasted with that walnut nicely and I'm really loving the look. And now I could get back to mounting the upper drawer slides which took a lot of calculating. Now it's hard to explain here, but basically I had to nail the position of the slides on the cabinet, the slides on the drawer, and the position of the drawer front all within a sixteenth of an inch of total error. I did a lot of checking. Alright, that'll do. So I went ahead and put the side drawer in for a test and we've got issues. I went with an inset drawer design and that was a huge mistake for a lot of different reasons for the positioning of this. But also the bigger issue is the drawer slide is set back further because it's an inset drawer and now it's hitting and it will not come out. Uh, which basically means I'm gonna have to put a shim in there and remake this drawer so that it will be more narrow. It is also rubbing right here because I wanted to get it as close as I could here to disguise that line. And I'm going to have to also reduce the height of it. Um, so yeah, a few things to work out, but we'll keep chugging. I disassembled the drawer and I cut the sides and made new fronts and backs. 
And honestly, this is why I don't glue my drawers. I always have a fear that something like this is gonna happen, and this little fiasco won't be helping matters. I cut and attached a half inch spacer to move the drawer slide away from the back of the cabinet so that it wouldn't hit it. And then I assembled the new drawer and tried everything out again. All right. And now it was time for the big show. I removed the temporary front and I attached the walnut front. I used the measurements from the mock-up to position everything for a consistent reveal and by some miracle, I got it perfect on the first go. No way. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Woo! I mounted the hidden slide onto the back of the drawer front as low down as possible to leave as much room for that button as I could. All right, that drawer front fits so nice. And now I'm doing the mock-up. This is the spring I'm looking at using to do the release trigger. And it's just a very simple uh, strip of thin plywood at an angle dug into the side. And what's gonna happen is that's going to slide in. And then you can barely even hear it. But now when it's pressed down, that will, oops, that will no longer allow it to move forward until that button is pushed. It's gonna make more sense when we put it on here, but uh, I tried a lot of different harder options and actually this simple option might work the best. So let's see if it works. I laid out where the spring needed to go based on the pocket location and I transferred that to the side of the drawer. Now the spring sits at an angle that's made by chiseling out a little indent in the side and screwing down the strip of wood. After a little work and some finesse, I had it ready to test fit. All right, guys, this is the first go at it, and uh, let's see if it locks in. Okay, it's pushing, it's sliding friction against that, which is good. Oh, it locked! It has locked in. So now I gotta install it and see if it'll unlock. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the spring is not in there, so uh, I'm going to fully extend this, and then we're just going to push it and see what happens. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put the spring in, now we're going to lock it back. Oh, it's not locking. Oh, because the thing's out. Oh. This is the problem with the design. I can't get to the button. I'm gonna have to, oh, dang it. How am I gonna reset this? I don't think the pressure's strong enough to push the button back out. Dang it, or it's racking. All right, let's see what's going on. All right, the button was racking back here. I made a few little adjustments. It is now locked again. Now I'm gonna push it. Comes out. The button is pressed in a bit here. And now watch this. <laughs> yes, it works. I gotta do that again. All right, I'm gonna get another spring so it'll shoot out a little bit more and see if I like that, but, but this totally works. Now, after I came down off my Rocky Mountain high, I made a false front for the secret drawer. I had to do a little bit of finagling to get it to fit nicely, but after a little work, it looked seamless. I finished the rest of the cabinet, installed the base and drawer pulls, and this thing looks like a million bucks. Now, the secret drawer is totally invisible, even upon close inspection. And that hidden button isn't perfect, but if you're not looking for it, you'll never know it's there. And now I've got a perfect spot to hide my most prized possessions. Hey, if you want to see more hidden project videos, I've got one queued up for you right there where I hid a wireless charger in my desk. Now let me know down below in the comments, what projects should I build next and what secrets or hidden things should they have in them? I want to give a big thank you to all the folks that have been joining the Builders Club and I'll see you guys on the next video.